Hey guys, hope you're doing well. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Sony a7C. I've had this camera for a while now and I just want to dig into all the different features to help you decide whether it's the camera for you or perhaps not for you. If you wanted a one word answer as to whether I'm happy with this camera, I would say yes. So let's discover why. I've always loved filming on a full frame camera. The ability to easily get that blurry background, the overall quality and the impressive ability to shoot in low light conditions but there is a drawback and that is the size and weight of them. Now I've owned a Sony a7 III for a while now, it's actually what I'm filming on currently, but whenever I go away and I travel I always result to getting you know a smaller camera and taking that out with me, but the drawback to that is that I compromise on quality. And that's why I've invested in a Sony a7C. Now the C stands for compact and what Sony have managed to do is fit the contents of an a7 III into the body of an a6 now this makes it so much more convenient for me because I can lug it around and I don't feel like a camel on a pilgrimage, it's way more accessible. Now not only have they reduced the size but they've also given it a few key upgrades. So let's talk about stabilisation. This body uses the same 5 axis in body stabilisation as the Sony a7 III and on top of that it also records gyro data. Using sensors it measures the camera's exact movements when you're shooting video, so when you take it into post-production into Sony own software called Catalyst Browse, it works by counteracting every individual jitter, giving you the most accurate way of stabilising your footage without necessarily using a gimbal. I wish everything in life would go that smoothly, such as the relationship with my mother. Having said that, using Catalyst Browse is a fairly time consuming process, so if you're working for clients and you've got projects on the go then it might be worth putting in that time, but if you're an everyday vlogger or an influencer then maybe you don't want to spend so much time correcting things. So in situations like that you're going to have to rely on in-body stabilisation. Now Sony aren't well known for creating the best stabilisation systems, so if you're a vlogger or someone who walks around a lot with the camera, you're going to want to buy a lens with stabilisation built in. That way you can rely on the in-body stabilisation with the camera and the stabilisation of the lens to create a very smooth look. I'll put a link below to a great stabilised lens which is perfect for vlogging, so if you want to check that out then please do. So what other upgrades are there? Well, Sony has removed the 30 minute recording limit for mirrorless cameras, which is great, but the main reason why I purchased this camera is the colours that come straight out of the camera when you shoot with it. It's common knowledge that the Sony a7S III is top of the range when it comes to shooting video, and sometimes Sony has been criticised for colours that come out of cameras in terms of skin tones, however they've managed to get it spot on with the Sony a7S III, which is hardly surprising given the price of that thing, which made it very difficult when I had to answer the question, do I want another camera or do I want a jet ski? Needless to say, I am going to be in Marbella this summer, so please leave me a comment if you want to hit me up. Now the amazing thing is that they've taken that colour science and put it into the a7C, which is an impressive upgrade from the a7 III, which I'm filming on right now. Now you'd expect it to come with a really hefty price tag, but somehow Sony have managed to keep the price down. Now if you want to check out the latest price, just have a look at the link below. So what's the catch? It's smaller and lighter than the a7 III, as well as it recording gyro data. It has top of the range colour science, it doesn't have any recording limit, and it's around a similar price. Well the compromise is that there are fewer custom buttons, the scroll wheel at the front has been removed, and the viewfinder is a little bit smaller, because it's no longer at the top, but it's on the side. Now none of these things really affect performance, so I'm not super worried about it, however there is one thing that I want to point out that may be a concern for some of you, and that is that there is only one SD card slot. Now in the seven years that I've been filming I've not really had any issues with any SD cards failing on me, but say you were a wedding videographer or photographer and you needed that reassurance, then maybe this camera isn't the right one for you. As far as the video formats go, it shoots in 8-bit and a resolution up to 4K at 30 frames per second, or 1080p at 120 frames per second. It'd be nice to shoot 4K at 60 frames per second, but hopefully they'll bring that out with a firmware update. So I'm actually shooting on the a7C now and you can probably tell that I'm pretty happy with it. There's going to be a bunch more videos about the different settings that I use for various shoots, as well as how to set this camera up for a studio environment. One thing I haven't spoken about is the autofocus, which is greatly improved from the a7 III. It tracks your face flawlessly and follows you around like a landlord that just is very demanding. Yeah, the rent is on its way to you, Paul, I promise you. Okay. 
yeah, I just don't want to pay it. There are settings within the camera to customise how autofocus works. You can choose different focus areas or you can choose how quickly those areas come into focus. With a kit lens, it's great for everyday footage such as vlogs. With a prime lens, it's really good for artistic work and cinematic shots. And if I put a good microphone on there, it's perfect for interviews or even studio footage. Or picking up thunder. <laughs> Overall, I'm really happy with this camera. I'm actually going to be selling my Sony a7 III because I have no use for it anymore. And I'm no longer jealous of the Sony a7S III because I have the same colour science, but for half the price. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if it's been useful to you, then hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time. The impressive ability to be able to get that blurry background effortlessly. The ability to effortlessly. The ability to get that blurry background effortlessly that impressive a bit